Hi friends, welcome back to the Blueprint Nursing YouTube channel. My name is Abby and today we'll be reviewing priorities of burn management. My goal is that by the end of this video, you'll feel confident and ready to tackle this topic when you take your NCLEX exam. With that, let's jump into burn management. Let's start at the beginning of burn management, when the burn initially happens. Prior to the client being brought to the hospital, it's important to accurately assess the extent and depth of their burns. Have you seen our video on the rule of nines? If not, definitely check it out. It'll be linked in the description down below. The rule of nines is a great tool that can be used to determine the extent of burns. The main priorities of pre-hospital care are to stop the burning process, assess and stabilize the ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation, and transfer the client to a hospital as efficiently as possible. Depending on the severity of the burn, the client may need to be transferred to a specialized burn center. While en route to the hospital, the burn should be covered with a clean, dry dressing or plastic cling wrap to help limit the depth of the burn. Ice should never be applied directly to the burn as this can worsen the injury. Now let's move on to what to do when the client arrives at the emergency department. Upon arrival to the ED, cardiac and oxygen saturation monitoring should be initiated. Remember those ABCs? Stabilization of the airway and any life-threatening injuries takes priority over the burn itself at this time. Upper airway obstructions can occur rapidly in clients who have burns to the face, neck, and airways, so it's important to be prepared for potential intubation. And some clients may have a patent airway, but will still experience bronchospasm related to inhalation of smoke and may require bronchodilators. Clients exposed to smoke should also be assessed for carbon monoxide poisoning. Do you remember the most notable sign of carbon monoxide poisoning? Cherry red lips, mouth, and mucous membranes. You got it. Carbon monoxide poisoning can be self-limiting once the client is removed from the source and treated by giving 100% oxygen. Another treatment that is indicated in adult clients with burns to over 20% of their total body surface area is fluid resuscitation. The exact formula for fluid resuscitation can vary, so be sure to follow your hospital's policy. Have you heard of the Parkland formula? That's a pretty common one. The initial goal of fluid resuscitation is restoring cardiac output and tissue perfusion. This can be difficult to evaluate in severely burned clients, so you may see insertion of a central venous catheter, which measures cardiac output and perfusion, serial serum lactate labs drawn, which help to measure tissue oxygenation and monitor for shock, and insertion of an indwelling catheter to monitor urine output. Once a client is stabilized and fluid resuscitation has been initiated, subsequent management can begin. During this stage, it's important to carefully assess for additional injuries. These clients may experience a significant amount of pain and managing it is critical. Small burns may be managed with a cold compress and oral analgesics, while larger burns may require parenteral analgesics such as opiates. Another consideration is hypothermia. Clients who have sustained large burns can lose heat very quickly, so wrapping them in a blanket or foil can help prevent hypothermia. If a client experiences deep burns, surgical therapy may be indicated. This is especially true in clients with circumferential burns. Remember that clients with burns are at high risk of infection due to their injuries. Proper wound care is extremely important to prevent infections that could lead to sepsis. I know this was a long topic, so thank you for sticking with me. As a quick knowledge check, what is most important to initially manage with burn injuries? Airway, never forget your ABCs. Great job. There are our references. Thank you so much for working through burn injury management with me. Remember, if you want to see further explanation on the Parkland formula or other nursing topics, don't hesitate to comment them down below. We love hearing from you and are here to help in any way that we can as you prepare to become a real deal registered nurse. Don't forget to check out our other social media platforms, including our Instagram, TikTok, with live study sessions, and our website for our crash course and live NCLEX study group. See you next time.